the, the key thing to tea is that none of us are experts. We're all learning all the time. And every time we travel, every time we meet new people, we learn something new about tea. And that's what's so exciting about this adventure. You never get to the end of your journey. So sometimes you will find people say conflicting things because that's their experience. So I'm going to try first is the white tea. It's a Chinese white tea. It's where tea, white teas originally came from, from Fujian province. And as you can see from the dry leaf that's on the table, and whether you want to pass this around, you've got a really nice fat furry bud, exactly as a white tea should look. Um, made from the Darbai bush, the big white. Now, you, I'm sure you know that when we make white teas, we try not to cause any oxidation. The idea is to pick the leaf and let it dry and wither naturally. But we're not going to do anything to it to stop oxidation, so there is always some very light natural oxidation on white teas. And if you take one bud out of that little bowl and you have a look at the end where it used to be joined to the plant, you'll see that it's a different colour because the juices have been released and it's oxidised. So you've got a little bit of brown black colouring. You all pass it around this way. So if you look at the, at the stalk end, on all of these, you can see it's gone brown. And that's because we've released the juices very, very black at the end. So that's natural oxidation. And we've done nothing to the leaf or the bud to stop that from happening. Now this is why in ancient times and in one or two places around the world today, when they pick the leaf or the bud and the leaf for white tea, they use little scissors. You heard about that? In there's one, at least one tea estate in Sri Lanka that makes a white tea, a bud tea, um, the silver needle style. Um, from a different varietal. So it looks very different and it tastes very different, but they actually send three very carefully trained girls out into the garden with their bowl and their little golden scissors and they snip it off. Now that means that you're not risking bruising the bud, so you won't cause any oxidation. So the less you handle the bud, the less oxidation you will provoke and you will keep the tea really nice and white. Okay? So that's, that's what white teas are all about. Very careful picking, as little bruising and handling of the leaf as possible and then naturally dried first of all in the sun and then indoors in a drying room sometimes maybe a little bit of extra heat added if it's a very damp day um, and the drying process will depend the length of the drying process will depend on the ambient temperature and the humidity in the air because it can be have any of you you've been in china some of you you know, if you're in the mountains on, a, on a, a, a spring day or early summer day, it can be very, very wet, uh, a lot of rain, and so the leaf's not going to dry that quickly because there's already moisture in the air, okay? So um, what we're looking for when we drink a white tea is a very, very, very mm. delicate flavour, a very pale colour, usually the colour of champagne or Chablis, one of those beautiful, delicate white wines. 